Hi, I'm Rich with Inside HPC. We're here at SC18 in Dallas, Texas. And today I'm here with Dr. Sofia Velacorsa from CERN. How are you doing today? I'm very good, thank you. Well, thanks for having me. I got a question for you okay. about deep learning. I've been watching some of your talks and stuff. Why is it important to scale performance for something like deep learning? Well, I can tell you what we need to do for our uh, use case. So um, we are trying to do simulation to speed up simulation for particle physics experiments and simulation based on Monte Carlo techniques is a very complex problem and it's very demanding in, in terms of time and computing resources so if we can replace it with deep learning then we can solve a lot problems that are a lot more complicated than what we can solve today but to do that we need to be to train precisely very um, very complex deep learning models, so we need to scale. So that is the connection between improving performances of deep learning models and simulation. So what are the challenges for you working with these neural nets is what I used to call them, right? And uh, how difficult is the, the training aspect of that? So we are working with the specific models, so those are called deep generative models, because those are the models that we can actually use to replace Monte Carlo simulation. And so, the problem with these models is that you always want to make sure that you are using them to generate realistic synthetic data that looks exactly like the one you would produce with Monte Carlo. Synthetic data. Synthetic data, exactly. Something that looks like the real thing, but that you can produce much faster. And yeah. Like your giant experiment with the things going nearly the speed of light? That's that yes. You can't just fire that up every five minutes, right? Well, you want to generate data that that you know exactly how it will behave so that you can compare to what you're going to measure in your collider, in your experiments. So that is the main reason for simulation. And so keeping performance under control and making sure that our generative models are actually creating physics the same way Monte Carlo simulation would ensures that we can actually use it in a large range of applications. Well, I want to talk to you a little bit about accuracy in yeah. this world, right? Do you need to be 99.9 .9 or do you need a million out of a million or can you put that in perspective? Okay, so again, when we talk about accuracy for this specific uh, application, we really are talking about how can I be sure that my model is generating something that is realistic, so that really looks like the real thing, the, the, the Monte Carlo data. Um, so we do require a high degree of performance, of accuracy, if we want to call it that. Um, it is true that the, the, the higher we get, the larger the number of analysis we can help with this kind of approach. Can I ask you about signal to noise ratio for that experiment? I mean, it, it seems like there's a lot going on and you're looking for one little uh, gluon or whatever it is, right? Yeah, well, some of the physics processes that are being investigated are extremely rare. So one of the biggest challenges is, of course, to being able to observe something like that, to keep under control all the uninteresting events that happen at such a much, much higher rate. And so simulation and a detailed simulation really helps in that direction as well. Hey, well, thanks for sharing. This is fascinating. Have a great week here in Dallas. Thank you.